Sorry about that. Struggling with the screen. All right, so this is how the unsession works. Um, uh, how many people have done this before? Uh, you can raise your hand or, or um, yep, I see Robin has raised her hand. Um, all right, so, um, so the way this works, we do this every year. Can everyone see the screen okay? Um, so the way this works is I have this Google Doc um, and you, I'll pop it in the chat. Let's find the chat. Is someone there that could pop this link in the chat for me? I've got you, Alex. Oh, thanks, Erin. Um, awesome. So, um, so go to this um, Google Doc and you can follow along with, um, uh, with the things that are listed here. Anyone can sign up to, um, in three minutes or less, present something. Uh, and so it's a short thing about whatever it is that you're doing that you think is cool, that you would like to share, that, um, that is happening on your campus, a practice, um, uh, you can promote an event um, you know, happening on your campus or some activity or initiative. Uh, we really want to get a wide range of, um, of uh, mini presentations here. And, um, and so um, um, basically you, you just come here to, to the bottom of the page because we're gonna go in order, it's all numbered. And I see Lisa Dubuck is the last one to put something here. So you would just go to the next line and uh, type your name in your campus and then whatever it is that you would like to share. And, and you can put links or you can put some narrative um, or just your name and your campus. And then when it's your turn, uh, we'll turn it over to you to present something. So I'm gonna go first just to show everyone how, um, how it works works. And I um, wanted to make sure that um, everyone was aware of the remote teaching checklist. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to check that out, um, we um, have provided this um, and done some webinars on it. And so there's a link to it in the in the Google Doc. Um, I also have a folder, a Google folder of resources for Oscar implementation. It'll help you if you're thinking of a larger scale Oscar um, online course quality initiative on your campus. And so I wanted to share those resources. If you click on that link, you'll um, you'll get a copy. Sorry, you'll get um, um, a link to a folder, and you can copy the folder or the elements in the folder, and they can be yours. You can make copies of them for yourself. Um, we also so I wanted to share that we've migrated from Credly to Acclaim, and you can click on that link there and check out all of the badges as they now exist in this new platform called Acclaim. And then some instructional um, materials and resources that I wanted to share were our self-paced and self-serve resources. If you haven't had a chance to check those out, we have a number of very cool um, resources for instructional designers as well as for faculty that you can take a look at um, and they are uh, you know self-serve kind of uh, of resources there and then um, a little bit more specific I have um, created these recipe cards um, for um, um, creating open pedagogical activities and practices in your online instruction. And so you can follow the recipe cards. And if you click on each one of these um, uh, little mini graphics, you will get um, the full description of, um, of the innovation of the, of the activity, the types of activities. So all of the information is right there. Okay, I'm done. Now, um, Trevor, you are up and I need to know, do you need to share your screen or do you just wanna talk? Um, I can put stuff up behind me. Okay. So if people are watching the, the normal speaker view, they there should be are. able to see me. You. you see yep. me? I think we can see you, yep. Yep. Okay, hi, I'm Trevor from Finger Lakes Community College. Um, I'll take my three minutes and please feel free to stop me if I drag on too long. Uh, I am a professor. Uh, as you can tell. So uh, what I want to talk about is using notes, class, actually class notebooks in um, OneNote. 
So if your campus is set up to use OneNote and you're in the Office 365 environment, you can set up a class notebook. And for privacy reasons, I don't have all of my students over here. So this is kind of just a test notebook. But what will happen is you've got these different sets of folders where you can put stuff in a content library to share with students. You can break it down into notes and so on. Um, you have a place to put your own stuff here with the teacher only section. And then it'll have a list of all your students. And each student has a folder that you can do homework, class notes, handouts, quizzes, or anything else. And the fun thing about this is that you can put stuff in here and it goes immediately out to your students. So one of the, uh, and I'm not gonna read you all the notes that I put in here, but what you can do is you can actually handwrite if you have a tablet and the students will see what you're writing right away. Okay, so if I start to write on my tablet, you can see that there, and obviously there's problems with uh, handwriting and so on. Uh, so you wanna be careful with this. You do need some practice uh, to make this work. But your students can see all this stuff. And if a student has a tablet themselves, down here in their own spot, they could write things back to you. So if you're a math teacher or a science teacher that does a lot of written problems, this would be a great way to interact back and forth, kind of like the whiteboard, uh, except it's virtual for you to use. Um, and I do have back in my couple of notes, if I've got this here, um, you, there is a little bit of a learning curve and you do have to have this available on your campus to use it. Um, it doesn't go directly into most learning systems, but you can always put a link. Students can download it and go from there. Um, so it's a really cool tool to use. Um, I've just started using it myself. And uh, I had students actually cheer when I said I was going to do something like this because they've seen this in the high schools. So they're kind of expecting it, it when they come forward to us. Great. Thanks so, so thank much you. for hearing that, Trevor. That's um, super interesting. And for putting the info in the Google Doc, um, there was a question about how you're displaying your desktop behind you. How do you do that? Okay, so I have a green screen behind me. <laughs> oh, okay. And so what I do is I project myself uh, and the screen as two separate pieces in a program that's called, uh, let me transition here. It's a program called OBS. Okay. So it's basically set up like a television studio so that I can put whatever's on my screen. I put myself in front of that and send it out to the world which is really good when you're teaching math and physics because you can actually point, this is where I'm talking about here. Uh, but I've gotten pretty good at using the mouse and my hand at the same time. Uh, so if students don't see my picture, they can at least see my mouse. Great, thanks Trevor. You're welcome. All right, Robin, you are up and I have a timer going. Good. <laughs> Okay, so um, I just, I'm very grateful to have five minutes of time yesterday on the summit, but I did want to take one more second to talk about the um, book that was recently published with an article that features a number of the MTech um, participants and faculty and fellows. And uh, it's nice to see um, Trevor was a fellow um, in, um, in the tote um, right before this. So um, just wanted to mention that this chapter, if anybody would like a copy and their library doesn't have it yet, just send me an email and I will make sure to get it to you. But it has a lot of um, scenarios from the faculty who participated and how they're using the tools. For example, um, Katrina from Buffalo talks about her use of um, wikis and blogs to help students do a kind of open pedagogy and developing content. Um, Jess Kruger is in there talking about her use of um, video for feedback and how she used COIL um, activities within, with, the, with all of the resources that are found in MTech. Um, you can see the title of the chapter and the book in the Google Doc. 
Um, but also just want to mention um, that uh, please keep your dates open for May 13th. We would love to see a cohort of SUNY folks on the um, Future Trends Forum call that the authoring team is scheduled to be on Brian Alexander's um, very popular series that's always a Thursday at two o'clock. I work, recommend signing in for that as much as possible. And the link on the Google Doc also points you to the resources to share widely with all of your students and all of your faculty and all of your friends and family um, in your campuses and wherever they might be. So Cherie, do you want to add a little bit? I know you're on the call with me here. Maybe mention the strategy that you added to the um, chapter. Yeah, I thought I was really uh, being ahead of the game when I did my strategy. I had introduced, I had been taking it, teaching a um, internship course. So the students are on an internship and they're also taking my course um, as part of it. And I thought it was really great because I had one of the classes on Zoom and now all their classes are on Zoom. So that's it. Just wanted to share and um, you know, make it uh, be able. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, everybody. You're muted, Alex. Thanks, Robin. Um, Lisa, you're up next, and I think you can share your screen. Yep. All right, Chrome tab. Okay. Can you see my web tech board? I believe so. Okay. So I, um, I wanted to just share this tool that I started to use in my class this semester. I was on a training during our professional development days and the trainer was a company that was hired. They kept having us go and we had to do these Zoom breakout rooms. It was a diversity training. And after the breakout room, they'd have us go to this tool and we would make our comments and then others would comment on it. And I was like, what is this tool? And here it was called Padlet. I don't know if any of you have ever heard it. But I just thought I would share, and I just added stuff to uh, the SUNY, your unsession Google Doc there, Alex. So this it's a Padlet. It's a free board. You can pick the theme and all those other kinds of things. But um, I post, I thought I'd try it with my online course. And what I did is I posted our Web Lab One instructions, which is students go, it's a web tech course. They went to explore emerging technologies. Then they had to make a Google slideshow on it, share it with the class and make comments. So I put the instructions here and you can see in these students, my students said um, it was fine to share. So I just want you to know that's why you see student names and comments. They were more than happy to share this with this group. And so you can see they all posted on their board and then people make comments. Um, uh, I did have a little lesson learned that students, when you give them a link, they don't have to have an account so they can be anonymous. So I asked them um, if they didn't wanna have an account then just add their name to their comments like Aliza did here in this example. Um, so that was one lesson learned. But what I really liked about it is that I thought I'm gonna use this for training sessions that I do or Zoom, you know, if I do class via Zoom blended, I'm gonna use this as part of, if I have breakout rooms, have them share. Uh, this is an online course example, but I also think I'm gonna use it as part of my training series with faculty. I think it's a good way to maybe gather their muddiest point um, or key takeaways and have others comment on it. And then I also do other shared projects in my online course that um, I will have students use this. They liked using this tool far better than some of the other discussion tools. I like students, it's a web tech course. I expose them to VoiceThread, uh, the regular discussion format, you know, tool and Blackboard and, um, and, and using this web tech board. Um, so far, this is the one they've chosen, they've liked the most. But what I wanted to show you, I don't think it will come up on the share. So I'm just gonna go to my link here quickly. I wanted to show you this link. I took a screenshot of it. The great thing is students, when they, I'm just trying, when they, um, when they wanna post, they have a variety of methods. <clears throat> so I, I took the screenshot to show you. And you can see that they can, um, you know, upload, link, Google, Snap, film right on it, voice, record their screen. So they can do all of these tools right from within the Padlet tool, which they really like that option. Lisa, we and can't I see can also, I'm sorry. 
We can't see whatever you're showing. It's not coming up on this. Let me just, okay, so I could probably just do a new share, right? Maybe okay. I got to pull it up on it. Uh, well, you could hear what I, that link is in the, it's, it's, if you look at the Google Doc, um, I put the links to it, what it looks like, an example, and you can download it and you could download it also um, in a PDF format, an image, an Excel file, you can get a QR code um, so that you could save it. And that's pretty neat as well. I just wanted to share that it's kind of a cool new tool I've been using and um, I've been exploring it. And so far, good feedback from students. Thank you. Great, thanks, Lisa. All right, Ed, you're next. Do you have something you wanna share or are you just gonna talk? Do you need to share your screen or do you just need to talk? Yeah, I'll share my screen. Okay, we have to promote you then. Uh, Nancy, are you doing that? Yeah. So what I just wanted to share is we have been exploring using Commons in a Box Open Lab. Um, Commons in a Box was a system developed by CUNY and they've kind of, Commons in the Box was their original attempt at it. And then they kind of did their 2.0 version that they call Open Lab. And we're looking at the Open Lab site right now, which is Sunny Oneana's. And basically it uses WordPress multi-site that we can create individual WordPress sites that are either courses, projects, organizations, mm. or individual portfolios. And what I really like about it, because I've, I've really liked using open and public tools in the past, one of the things I really appreciate in the, what the CUNY team built into the program was that you could set permissions on any of these sites courses, projects, organizations, or portfolios. So a student could choose that, yes, I'm gonna do all the work for this um, class and create a portfolio using WordPress, but you know what? I wanna only share that portfolio with just my instructor. Or say, I just wanna share my portfolio with just my class or just my institution as a whole, um, which gives them a little bit of control over the privacy and also puts us a little bit more in line with like FERPA controls because, um, you know, I'm showing student names right here, but I'm only showing the student names of the people who made the conscious decision of, I would like to share this with a larger audience. And FERPA only protects, of course, what students are required to share. When they share more, um, that's up to them and that's their own um, gumption. And we used to do things in the past, like, you know, use a pseudo name or, or use a, your screen name or something like that. But I really liked that they could make a portfolio, they could build it, they could build it slowly. And I'll just show you, I had an intern this last semester. This is what an open lab portfolio looks like. We have a shared header across all of our sites that has our institutional logo and would bring you back to the main site. They get their own subdomain. And then at the bottom, we have a shared footer that says, yes, this is a SUNY Oneana profile and it's from, it's a powered by Commons in Box Open Lab. So it's been a lot of fun exploring this. And it's been a lot of fun because the CUNY team has been so collaborative. Um, Amanda Wentworth and, um, from Geneseo and I have actually met with them several times through this process. and added them to our professional network. That's great. And Maureen's asking if it's free. So WordPress is a open source solution and comes in a box is an open source solution, um, which means I set it up using our SUNY Create hosting, which meant that it was where all I had to pay for was hosting because hosting is not always free, even if the technology that underpins it is free and open source. Great. Now, uh, thanks for adding that. Um, I skipped over Maureen and sorry about that, Maureen. Um, I think uh, you are able to share your screen now. So let's um, go. Alex, the there was one question for Ed. They were just asking if he liked it better than Google Sheets. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, you Google know, sites. I t value teaching students WordPress because WordPress powers 40% of the internet. So I think when we teach students how to do it, we're teaching them a, you know, a transferable skill. 
um, even like our own conference website this week, Alex is managing that all on WordPress. It's something that people do. Um, and so to build it as their portfolio system means that they can use all of the tools there, but then they can export it and take it with them wherever they go. And so if they want to purchase their own domain, if they want to purchase their own hosting later, or if they just want a free WordPress.com, I, I value using WordPress. Um, and, you know, my oldest WordPress site is about 10 years old now. Um, and one of, one of the things I like about WordPress is you can update the theme and you can make a site look modern again, even if the content is a little bit older. Um, so all reasons why I value uh, doing that and doing it in WordPress. Thanks, Ed. All right, let's go on over to Maureen. Maureen? Hi, everybody. Um, Ed, yeah, I'd love to be able to get a little more information about what you did there because that's very exciting. Portfolios are probably a huge topic, I'm sure, everywhere. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to share, just something small and um, looking at, I want to say over the years, I've always loved uh, Monroe and then Niagara, all the stuff that you guys have done support wise is just way ahead of everybody all the time. So following on some of the things that I've seen you guys do, we created um, tabs in our Blackboard system when we shifted over to this remote learning because we have a lot of faculty who've never used Blackboard and a lot of students who never have. So um, let me see if I could share my screen. There we go. And just show you what we have here. Um, that didn't work. No, I'm going to stop sharing because I'm not sure. Let me try one more time here. should be showing is this Maureen I had to click on like share instead of your whole screen I had to click something like my chrome tab I don't know if that's an option that was in the upper right hand corner okay thanks let me see Lisa okay there we go can everybody see this um so this is our student success tab we created this and what we put here was we got, had one of our former students do a little intro to students telling them the benefits of the the tips that might be found here on this page. So we broke it into three areas here, the tech, the tools, and the time management that students might need for using Blackboard, learning online, learning remote, and different things. We have a, a checklist here for students on tech requirements, um, information that our library can lend them a Chromebook. Um, we've got information on Ally when we finally enabled Ally across all courses, what that is. We used Respondus, so we've got the video down here for the students uh, how to use lockdown browser, um, the Blackboard orientation, our Center for Student Success for tutoring, and then some time management things from our tutoring area. And then just little things here. So the orientation of Blackboard, how to use Zoom, what about your SUNY Orange Gmail and Google Docs and all that stuff. So it's a dynamic site. Every time somebody tells us, gee, can you pop something else there? We just do it right away, which is much easier than going through our communications area to get anything on the portal. And so as a follow-up to that, we created one for faculty. And this is our faculty success. We modeled it a little bit along the same, but uh, feedback we got from faculty, they don't know how to use Zoom, breakout sessions, uh, uh, accessibility information. That's our, our big thing this year that we're trying to tackle is the accessibility component. But for faculty too, how do you use Google Apps, Zoom, Collaborate, Blackboard? How do you get Office? And then our library is included here. And then one of the other components that's going to be here on both pages, but isn't here yet, is information for our health services area. So mental health, self-care. Uh, I remember a few months ago, I'm not even sure which webinar it was that somebody did this great presentation on all the self-care and the meditation apps that were out there and all just the different things to help you stay sane. So we wanna put something like that there as well. Um, so that's about it. It's not you know pretty basic stuff that a lot of you guys probably are already doing, but um, so far our feedback has been really, really positive from faculty and students. So it looks like it's, it's doing well. Thanks, Maureen. Okay, so next on the list is Rob. Rob, you need to share your screen? Yeah, I can share my screen, hold on. I think I remember how to do that. <laughs> um, 
so sorry. It's great to see everybody, by the way. I'm um, just going to make this bigger. This literally, I came up with this since uh, the last the last session, Alex. That student session was just downright inspiring. And I was thinking about, can you guys see me and hear me? You're a little bit. Um, yes. Oh. Your, your, your voice is a little. I didn't start. Busy. But yeah, we can see it. Rob? Is, Are you still there? It's not coming clearly? No, Rob, stop sharing your screen. Okay. I think we can look uh, at the sort of. Google Doc and see it, okay? I think that's what it's, the pro there's a problem with your internets. Oh. Maybe the phone connection would be better for you. Have him go yeah. after. Hey, Rob, yes. you're just breaking up. It's not good. Um, uh, you need to stop sharing, Rob. Nancy, as the host, stop you can it. actually force um, Rob to stop sharing if you can do that. There we go. Yeah, there you go. All right. Rob, you still there? All right. Uh, Rob's having technical challenges, but he posted a bunch of stuff in the Google Doc. Um, so um, maybe if he gets that... Um, uh, internet thing, you know, fixed, uh, he can come back in. Now, I don't see anyone else signed up. And so I'm going to start calling people because I know you all are doing um, really, really cool stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to go down my list. And I just saw Ann Reed. Ann Reed, what are you doing that's cool? Hi, um, what I'm doing that's cool, uh, besides being here and listening to all of you. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I'm overseeing micro credentials still at the University of Buffalo, so I'm really not so much engaged in what's going on with online learning unless it's online learning relating to micro credentials. But we now have over 60 micro credential programs and we're constantly issuing digital badges, so that's really great. And uh, we're building out our first micro credential that's going to be on Coursera, so that's kind of cool too. Yeah. Oh, um, Robin's got something to chime in about that. Oh, the second one, then? It's second a one, Anne. We, okay. we got our Coursera credential connection made, and the um, Applied Digital Literacy Specialization has got the Coursera badges. So if you want to connect and talk about how we're doing it and how you're doing it, maybe we can learn a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's the first one that we've built specifically for Coursera. We have had other micro-credentials that then go on Coursera, so there's lots to learn about that process. All right, cool. Thanks so much. All right. I saw George Guba on the list, which is a huge blast from the past. George, what are you doing that's cool? Um, well, right now, job hunting, but um, that's not so cool this time of year. But, but what's cool is trying to find solutions for faculty when there's not enough budget. Um, one of the things at my previous institution that I was doing a lot of faculty did that with some of the faculty at Cortland is to try to come up with video chat since we're not paying for, you know, paying for those products through Blackboard. And so one of the solutions was to give directions to students and faculty on how to embed a video so it'll show directly. And so we can create a threaded, threaded uh, video discussion within a discussion forum. That sounds really cool. I just added you to the Google Doc. So if you want to um, augment that and, and you too, if there's any links or anything additional you want to add there to the Google Doc, we'd appreciate sort of keeping a, a documentation of, um, of that. But George, it's so nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Where Are you in Virginia? 
No, no, no. I'm up in uh, New York in Derrida now. Oh. Okay, you're back in New York. Awesome. Um, yeah, well, I had been working in SUNY Portland. Um, not a good fit. They're just uh -huh. Uh -huh. and okay. so back, back, back to looking, and not the time of year to be looking, but you know, not not the time of any time to be looking right now with the hiring freezes, but just, and trying to find something that's remote. <laughs> Great. Yep, I hear you. Um, so uh, excellent. Thank you for coming and, and uh, thanks for sharing. I'm going down the list and I see the name Anne de la Chapelle and somehow or another, your name is so familiar to me and I have a feeling, were you one of my students? I was, Alex. I was thinking that this is a big throwback, like seeing you and Rob and everybody. And I was your student. Oh my gosh, I got my degree in 2010. So um, I was teaching at Plattsburgh State back then, and I'm back in the public library world. So I'm up in Plattsburgh at the public library. But you look great. You look the same. It's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, I don't change. Um, so cool. So tell me what's cool that you're doing. I love seeing you here. Thanks for coming. Oh, well, this has been really interesting. Um, I, well, I'm the head of a public library in a city, and of course, we're dealing with all the shutdown stuff and having to um, do all of our delivery contact lists. So we've set it all up. I think uh, Albany Public's been a great role model for all of us upstate and um, just trying to deliver services um, while the building is closed. It's been a challenge. Excellent. Um, well, thanks for joining and for sharing. I, oh, yeah, it's I great to see all of you. So many familiar names and faces. And I do still teach online for Plattsburgh State. So um, that's that's been really rewarding. That's but it's awesome. nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. I put your name in the Google Doc. And so if there's anything else you want to share with the rest of us, please put a link or put some narrative in there for us. Okay. Now, I thought Erin Maney had um, put her name down. Erin, you want to share something? I did, Alex. I just um, had some opportunities for community engagement that I thought people might want to be aware of. Um, so in the doc, um, you'll get links to all of these things. So I'll just briefly mention them. Next week, um, you know, in case you're not already <laughs> zoomed out from this week of great sessions, um, Open Education Week is next week. And we will be hosting 15 different uh, webinars throughout each day. Um, you know, uh, most days I think have maybe four or five or one or two. Um, so it's spread out over the course of the week, and you can click on that link to see the lineup and to register. So these are our SUNY campuses who are doing some great work in open education. Um, all sessions will be recorded and we'll put those on our YouTube channel. So I'll put that link in there as well. Our SUNY online teaching ambassadors are going to be recognized on Friday. We would love for you to join that session and uh, cheer them on. These are the real exemplary um, advocates for online teaching and learning on their campus and they are nominated um, by their campus uh, every year. So you can meet the ambassadors at the link that I have there. They each have their own pages, so you can get to know them a little bit. Um, and then uh, yesterday we uh, had a session to showcase the effective online practices that were submitted this year. We also have a new repository on our website where you can look um, under any year or search by any campus to find effective practices that we've been collecting over the past seven years. Um, so it's a really great program. I would like invite you to check that out. We have a partnership with the University of Central Florida. They have a teaching online pedagogical repository that is really an international database of terrific effective online teaching practices. Um, and several of our SUNY effective practice entries have been um, published in Topper. So you can search for SUNY there. Thanks, Alex. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Erin. Um, so next on the list is Keith Landa. Hey, Keith. Hey, how you doing? Okay. So I'll go ahead and quickly share my screen. <laughs> uh, awesome. Just one thing that we've brought up uh, since spring, in addition to all the other scrambling we did, uh, was to add peruse all as a social annotation tool. I know a number of uh, SUNY campuses are using Hypothesis. Uh, we've decided to go with peruse all. It's uh, you add it into your LMS as, a, as an LTI integration. And then um, 
what you can do is, uh, I mean, it'll walk you through it. Basically, we'll set up a whole class environment for you on the Perusal site that mirrors your course structure in the LMS. It's a product that was originally developed at Harvard and has now been spun off. But basically, you can set up a library of resources, um, anything uh, from web pages, documents, uh, uh, a lot of actual uh, textbooks that you would be using anyway. You can actually bring them into your perusal library and then design annotation assignments around them. Uh, lots of uh, web video and so forth. So if you want your students to share annotations, comments and so forth on videos or web pages or documents, you would then set up assignments. Uh, and if I just open up, um, well, let's not do that one. Um, you know, you just pick one of these, you can set up what you want your students to uh, annotate, how many annotations, and then, um, you know, you can, I've got too many Zoom things in the way here, but you've got all sorts of tools for viewing individual students' annotations, your annotations, and so forth. And um, the other nice thing about this, especially for scaling up, is that you can set criteria for what you're looking for in the annotations, and there is an AI engine built into Perusal that will, um, um, and I don't want to go to the students tab because I haven't uh, taken care of any FERPA issues here, but I mean, basically um, the, the AI engine will do an initial scoring on the quality of each annotation or comment that the student puts on the video or the web page or the or the PDF, and based on the criteria you set, we'll come up with a you know basic score. You can transfer that back into the gradebook in the LMS. You can override it in any way that you want. So <clears throat> we've got a lot of faculty who are very interested in and in, and in, and have been taking up Cruise all because of the focus we have on you know close reading of assignments and and just general the social annotation gives you a, an understanding of what your students are thinking about rather than them just having a PDF on their computer that they're marking up in, in individually and uh, gets them to collaborate on making meaning out of uh, course resources. Great, thank you. All right, who is next on the list? Um, Shri. Hi, I just wanted to mention that at Binghamton, we have a B first mentoring network starting. <clears throat> We've been doing it about maybe a year and a half now. COVID has like sort of slowed it down a bit, but it is designed for first generation college students or first generation um, born in the US in the family, because even if you don't qualify for some of the programs, there's still a lot of things that you might not know, and it would help to, to have a mentor to help you um, get navigate through college. Also wanted to put a plug in for the um, SUNY Virtual Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Forum, which is in Workplace. And I don't know if that link's gonna take you there or not. I'm hoping it will. Um, they put together virtual events throughout the semester and um, really learning that we have a lot of really great resources in, um, in SUNY that would, would really help if you were trying, like I'd like to create like a little bit of a network so that if you wanted to do something on your campus about implicit bias or systemic racism, we could have a SUNY expert who could um, offer that to your campus. And that, that's all I had. Um, so if anybody has any more ideas on those two things, just um, let me know and I'd love to talk with you. Thanks. That's awesome, Sri. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. I wanted to, while we're um, listening to everyone, um, if you are uh, not from SUNY, it would be great if you could pop your name and your institution and your location in the chat just so that we can get a sense of who's in the room. I have a feeling there are people here who are our non-SUNY friends of SUNY. Um, and, um, and so I, I just wanted to see if, uh, if we could get a sense of who all is here um, is here with us. I think next on the list is, um, oh, Trevor wanted to show us his OBSPOT project again. Trevor, you wanna share your screen? Sure. Um, actually, I'll just do it with, with me again. So 
Uh, let's see. Okay, so you can see there, actually, let me put this here. Okay, so there's some ghosting kind of going on behind me here because what I'm doing is I'm putting this OBS project uh, is the place you go to get this software. Um, and what it does is it sets up a, basically a television studio and you can put different cameras into it. Um, I actually have a camera up here that is uh, my normal one. And then I have another one over here that is my uh, demo camera. So I'm a physics professor. I bring little things into my office and do the demos there. But what this does is it allows you to set up a green screen. And then I can transition back and forth between different scenes. So just like the weather person, I can do all this stuff here while perhaps putting myself up in front of a virtual background or in front of uh, one of the screens on my computer. So I have a couple of screens as well, uh, and you can share that out. There is a little bit of setup that's involved with it, but once you kind of get a hold of it, um, it really gives you power to share things uh, with your students. So I can run a PowerPoint on one of my screens, and I don't know what one's going to start up, but then I can just share the PowerPoint and so on. And it's a little uh, different from uh, sharing things out where you share your screen because you can put yourself in front of it and then point, okay, yeah, over here, over here, over there, uh, and so on. I'll put some more information in the, uh, the Google uh, Doc uh, once I get a chance. But Great, thanks so much for sharing sure. that, Trevor, thanks. Um, so I, I've got to go back and look at the sheet. No one signed up yet. So I'm going to call on uh, Alex, some of our- Before you call on someone, there is a question for Trevor. Oh, sorry, missed that. No, it's fine. Um, so uh, Trevor, will you use all these tools post COVID? And do you also teach in-person classes? Um, I do teach in-person classes. I'm actually signed up to take and discuss uh, or to take a high flex uh, course. Uh, here in March. And I'm sure this is something that I'm going to do because if you try to write things on a whiteboard uh, in class, it's really hard to pick that up uh, on camera. But if I can just run my tablet and do what I was doing earlier with OneNote and share something like this out, I can write on the screen and have it show up uh, as well. So I'll probably do that. And so I've just been trying to learn all these tricks and tools, uh, even just before COVID started, uh, because I was moving in that direction. Great, Great. Thank thank you. Alex, thank can you. I also ask you to inter or invite Keith to tell us what he did with the, putting him, how he put himself in the TV? That was cool. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's a great, yes, I took his picture, but Keith, how did you get yourself in a TV? Well, that's easy enough. Most of us are playing with Zoom backgrounds, but instead of a Zoom background, this is a, a filter. And so if you choose, if you go to choose video filter instead of choose virtual background, you just have all sorts of uh, different, um, uh, um, I mean, you could do uh, smiley faces around or you could, uh, I, you could do that, you know. <laughs> How many of you heard the story a week and a half or two weeks ago about the lawyer who was in a Zoom court? Yes, case hysterical. And couldn't get the cat face filter off that his uh, daughter had put onto um, onto the their Zoom app. Um, so that's that's what drove me to look into the filters and. Given that I'm in my conference room and I'm kind of a little bit back from the camera and there's all this excess space around, I like the, the TV enclosure. That's awesome. Thank you, um, Keith. And thanks, Robin, for asking. So um, I was just looking at some of um, our friends who posted who they are and where they're from. And I see Brian Hart has joined us from St. John's University. And I'm just wondering um, if you would mind sharing something cool that's going on at St. John's uh, in terms of online teaching and learning. Anything you can share? 
um, about yourself or your instruction or your campus, your institution? Oh, Alex, he said he has no mic. No so mic. Sorry, no mic. No worries. All right. So I'll go on to my friend Alex from the University of Central Florida. Alex, do you have something that you could share with us? Do you have a mic? Hey, I have a mic. I'm not teaching at UCF now. I'll I'll uh, defer to the distinguished speakers on the next panel because I <laughs> signed in to, to listen in to, to Chuck. Uh, but I'm over at Full Sail University now and I'm just getting onboarded. So I'm a little too bit too much of a, a newbie to talk about what they do there. That's an entertainment focused university, like, uh, you know, gaming, film production, music production, but I'm in the English department. I'll be teaching general education, you know, freshman composition type stuff there. But I, so I really can't speak to what they're doing except that they developed their own LMS. Um, so I'm gonna be curious to see how it compares to some of the other things I've seen once I get in there. But thank you for the invitation to speak. I'm sorry, I don't have much more to add at the moment. Yeah, no, it's great. Thank you for joining us. Love that you did. And, um, you know, just love to have our friends of SUNY join us at some of our open events. So it's great to see you here. Um, so another name that popped up in the chat was Scott Silverman, an instructional designer for SUNY Erie, from SUNY Erie. And I don't know you. So I would like to know you. Who are you? And what cool thing can you tell us is going on at SUNY Erie? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here. I'm actually in my uh, third year now as an instructional designer here at SUNY Erie. I've been around uh, doing different things over the years and in, in teaching uh, mostly at the secondary level. And I've been working in higher ed now for uh, a few years. Uh, one thing uh, that has been neat, obviously we're in the same boat as everybody else and having, this is my first conference, by the way. Uh, thank you for having me, it's been wonderful. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've been working on is just getting all of our faculty up to speed on, on, uh, on effective teaching strategies. Uh, if you want, I can try to share my screen here and I don't know how it's gonna work and I can show you our faculty support course. We did uh, a teaching online toolkit uh, using just Blackboard. We don't have anything fancy, any separate websites. We just had something very basic that we put together. So I'd be happy to share that with you. Um, yeah, sure. Let me try because I've never used Zoom. I, I we use WebEx uh, at SUNY Erie and Teams, uh, so I've never had to use Zoom before. So, if I is share screen, is that going to be a problem? Does it have to be the actual? No, go tab? ahead and try. Go ahead and try it. I okay. think you've been promoted. Okay. Hooray! Let's see. Let me know if you can see the screen that says Blackboard Ultra Upgrade. Yep. 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 So we switched to Blackboard Ultra last um, in in the middle of our um, this pandemic. We switched to Blackboard Ultra, not the whole Blackboard Ultra, just the Blackboard Ultra with the Learn interface, uh, just so we wouldn't confuse too many folks. That was in plan before uh, COVID struck, so we continued with that. And so during the start of the fall semester, we had besides the flood of emails for. Uh, just everybody who was online. We also had a bunch of online instructors who did not know where things went with Ultra. So we created a you know basic teaching online toolkit where uh, faculty could go and we have a support course that all of our faculty are enrolled in as students and they can go in and we have, we had a remote teaching institute in the fall where if I click here, we put, we have presentations on different topics, whether it was organizing and adding content, personalizing your course and improving interaction tests. And we basically surveyed our faculty and said, what questions do you have and how can we best answer those questions? So we had presentations there and then uh, further down the page, we had just basics for Blackboard for faculty who had never used Blackboard before, how to set up your course and how to navigate. Uh, we use Microsoft Stream here at SUNY Erie to, um, to have faculty post their own, you know, videos and, and link them into Blackboard. So uh, we have a whole section further down here on Microsoft Stream and WebEx as well, because WebEx and Stream were our two biggest uh, requests in terms of support tickets. And then just basic things like lectures, you know, activities, discussions, grading, uh, accessibility, how to, you know, make sure everything is accessible. And then I don't know how many of you guys use Proctorio uh, we signed a contract with them in the fall 
And uh, we switched from Respondus. We had used Respondus in the spring of last year, but when we put out an RFP, they did not uh, put in. So Proctorial was chosen and we have discovered through trial and error what works best and what doesn't work best with Proctorio. And that's been um, something that me, um, I'm the instructional designer on the Perkins grant. That's been one of my assignments this year on the Perkins grant is to come up with training resources for Proctorio as well as to be the go-between between between our faculty and uh, the Proctorio technical support team. And so we've seen a lot of different things come up uh, that that has been uh, very interesting with Proctorio. So that is something about us here at SUNY uh, Erie. I thank you very much for allowing me to share and and be a part of uh, the presentation. Excellent. Thanks so much, Scott. I put your name in the Google Doc, and if there's anything else you want to add, any any links, um, it would be great if uh, if you would. Um, so thanks for joining us. And and oh wait, I just saw I the hi. I just saw the video thing. I didn't realize I wasn't on, but nice to <laughs> nice to meet you. So thank you. Your picture. Thank you. Um, all right, so is anyone else in, has anyone else signed up for the Google Doc thingy? Not yet, so I am gonna go down my list. I saw, um, oh, who was it? It was Jamie Tabone. Um, and I see you posted a couple of things. Um, Jamie, um, it looks like you're an adjunct teaching online. Tell us a little bit about something cool about your instruction, your campus. Do you have a microphone, Jamie? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, hi. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I've been working my 17th year now at Buff State with the Art and Design Art Education Department. Been teaching um, face to face, and um, you know, years ago I had an opportunity to bring a bring a lecture hall class on to uh, you know fully online years ago. I've been doing that for like 15 years for Buff State in the art art and design program, and I did get my my master's in instructional technology 10 years ago. My, my first year at Duval College here in Buffalo um, as a instructional designer. And I started the day that they decided to go online because of the pandemic. And I guess the newest and coolest things at Duval right now is the fact that um, they're constantly expanding their fully online programs. And they have the first program going launching this fall, actually it's August, for a three-year doctorate of pharmacy program. It's the only one in the world that's three-year versus four-year fully online. So I'm actually starting to work with the professors now to get the courses built from traditional face-to-face -face into the online format. So we're working hard on that now to get full, you know, full accreditation and start rolling that up this August. Great, thanks so much for sharing that. I popped your name into the Google Doc and, and um, if you would, if you could um, put a couple of links in there for us to be able to come back to the doc and, and check you know, out that pharmacy program or, or um, you know, anything else you'd like us to, to know. It'd be great to have a little uh, stuff documented there. Great, thank um, you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so who else wants me to call on them? Come on, Alex. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'll add to the Google Doc. I see the link is there. Um, so I'm a faculty at SUNY Delhi. I teach in the Masters in Nursing Education program. And a year ago, when everything kind of crashed, and our students, our nursing students, are um, were on the front lines providing care in New York City. And so we really needed to make some major assessments and changes in our program. And so what we decided to do is we met as a faculty, we discussed some accommodations that we might want to make in all of our, our RN to BSN and our two online um, programs. And what we did was we looked at the discussions and instead of two responses, we went to one response and we reduced our participation from three days a week to two. And um, we just kind of approached the whole thing as being, which I'm sure most everybody did the same thing, just more, um, more flexible. Um, I mean, basically just, I should have mentioned this earlier, four of us did get together and we wrote an article which was just recently published um, about how we made this approach to our um, changing our programming a little bit. Um, it was a four-pronged approach. Um, one part is caring, one is dialogue, one is pedagogy, and one is policies. And interestingly, the one 
policy change that we did from the participation from three days to two, we made that a permanent change. We felt like students were as active as they would have been, um, knowing some students might post two responses on two different days, but really did it in one day. Um, but but as overall, I would say that it was a really great success. It really helped our students feel understood, cared for, needed. Um, we shared a lot of self-care information. As we know, nurses are sacrificing, um, you know, all their time and taking care of their kids and homeschooling and all of that. So, um, so we're still in that um, period of time where we have just the. The, the accommodations are a little bit, I'm a little more flexible right now. So we'll see how the fall comes and maybe we'll go back, but, but it was really, it really went well, so. Thank you for sharing, Jamie. You're from Delhi, right? Is that what yeah. you said? Um, yep. And, yep. Okay, awesome. And um, I put your name in the, um, in the Google Doc, just in case you wanted to add anything. I love, um, you know, if you have anything that you could share regarding some of the self-care, the policies, the, the mm -hmm. things that you changed or did, would love to have that documented in the Google Doc. That would be sure. awesome. To share. Sure. Um, I see that Terry Keyes has his hand up, but Robin Sullivan um, was uh, on the list. So Robin, you want to go? I talked quick? many times. Let Terry go. Okay. All right, Terry, what's up? You there, Terry? He took off when I called on him. <laughs> no, there you are. You there, Terry? I yes, I am. Sorry, I, I cut out and I'm in the car actually, so sorry for background noise. But actually, the last speaker, something that I've been thinking about, I don't have something to share, I have a question actually. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. And I won't show you my video now because I'm still trying to drive. But everything that goes <laughs> through my head through these sessions and something we talk about in our group a lot is how we capture everything we've learned over this pandemic and actually make it so as we move beyond. So for example, at MCC, every faculty member was went through training in Blackboard and has their bare minimum in Blackboard, something we wouldn't have been able to think of doing up until the pandemic forced us. We've all experienced Zoom. We've all experienced remote learning. And how do we capture all of those things and actually move forward as opposed to just sliding back into what we did before? So again, the last speaker um, I was trying to hear, but I put out, mentioned some things they've made permanent changes to how they are taught, how they're teaching. Again, I think this week is an amazing, um, these are amazing sessions, but I'm always afraid that after we finish these things, we go back to the chaos that we have at home and try to just keep our head above water. But all the things our group is doing at MCC, um, we're, we're talking about where do we start post this? Because literally the bar of where our faculty and students are, are has gone up significantly as far as their technical um, abilities and what they can do. And we almost want a fresh restart on what do we think of when we train and talk to faculty members and how do we wanna improve instruction? So, I mean, that just keeps going through my head. And the last speaker talked about a little bit of changes. And I, I wonder how we capture, so this is a great Google doc for this session and I take notes from all the other things, it'd almost be great if someone could do like a article review, a peer review of all the best from this and call it into one place and we can learn from it as well. So just some thoughts. So that, that's a great question. And I have heard um, that from others. And in response to that, from, from the same similar question last summit, um, the, doodle, the doodle group, um, came uh, to us and said that they would like to have a session um, here at this at this summit to kind of pull all of that together. So I want to make sure that you know about that, Terry, and that you attend the Google session, uh, sorry, the Doodle session at two o'clock on Friday, yep. where they're actually going to try and take some of the lessons learned and um, and do something with it. And your idea of coming up with some sort of um, a synthesis of stuff from the event um, would be a wonderful thing, maybe for Doodle to take. On? I don't know. Nope. Just I think it's awesome. In. Like I mean, like the the improved Oscar rubric that uh, takes into the new um, requirements for um, compliance, all those types of things. If we can get yeah. them all in one place, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So I will be yeah. at that. Great, great. Thank you, Terry. Please drive carefully. 
No, I will. And thanks for doing the <laughs> session. Yeah, no problem. So Alex, it's we are oh, okay. Yep, it's 1.45. I was just, thank you, Nancy. I was just noticing the time. Um, so, um, so I love this session and every year we have many, many more people and many, many cool things going on um, than we have time for. Uh, but the Google Doc is our document, our live, you know, shared doc. And if there is anything else that you would like to add, if there's anyone else who didn't get a chance to speak that would like to add something Thing, um, I, I would invite you to go there and at le your leisure, um, uh, you know, supplement what's already there or that you already wrote, or um, if you didn't get a chance to speak to put some stuff in. Um, thank you very much for, for everyone who joined, SUNY and non-SUNY, new friends and old friends. I love seeing you all. Thank you so much for coming. We have our next session coming up at, oh, browser you would not believe how many windows two o'clock it's at two o'clock and and it's um um is that chuck is it it chuck? is chuck yes Yay. so if you have never met chuck jubin uh or patsy mosco from ucf you are in for an extraordinary um, experience. He is an incredible rock star in our field and um, will have a very, very good presentation. It's teaching and learning in the digital age, adaptiveness, scarcity, instructional technology, and equity. And he and pa Patsy will be, um, um, you know, the hosts of that session, the presenters for that session. So come on back at two o'clock. We'll see you there. And thanks for, um, for participating in your engagement in this session. Really appreciate it. 12th annual uh, unsession. I can't believe it.